Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello there, welcome back to Lost Signals Reviews Film and Television, and won't you please toss a coin to your local podcasters. I am Scott Thurlow, here with my uh, merry band of uh, ruffians, Christopher Morgan. Where's my unicorn? <laughs> Season two. Uh, Jonathan Ian Manzer. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and Stephen Amosi. How's it going? <laughs> and as you may have gathered, we are going to review the recent, uh, recently released Netflix series, The Witcher, based on the mostly the original novels and stories and not so much the games, even though, admittedly, I'll say it out front, I am a fan of the games quite a bit. So yeah, given that, with their first season, um, I don't think we came up with a logline, so Geralt does stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Geralt grunts a lot. Ger- Geralt quietly Geralt, the does the legendary things. journeys. Yeah. Yes, that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> pretty good. So with that, E, why don't you uh, tell us about the plot of The Witcher? Well, I already mentioned uh, it is half... Uh, oh, it is the plotline of Hercules' <laughs> legendary journeys. <laughs> uh, but set in the world of no, The Witcher. But set within a... A Westworld type timeline, a season one timeline framework, mm. in that there are basically three plot lines in this show set over three different timelines, which uh, coalesce over the progression of the yeah. season. Uh, we have Geralt and his uh, male companion, uh, annoying male companion, <laughs> uh, Jaskir, uh, who is playing uh, uh, Iolis uh, <laughs> from, uh, and they're going on Monster of the Week. Uh, journeys. Yeah, more or less. Uh, you have Yennefer, a uh, a malformed uh, daughter of a pig farmer. But powerful in magic. Exactly. Who uh, discovers her magical abilities, mm. uh, becomes a beautiful sorceress, and finds uh, her life not necessarily what she imagined it to be, uh, being all powerful. And you have Ciri, uh, the daughter of a deposed queen. Princess on the run. Who has some sort of uh, kind of supernatural magical power, <laughs> uh, something to die with destiny, which we don't know much about, except that the big bads are chasing after her as she's running to find Geralt. And uh, it's like most Monster of the Week shows, it very much varies episode to yes, episode. Yes, exactly. Uh, I didn't catch the timeline uh, swap until maybe the fourth episode mm. when, a char- uh, when a character appears in a situation they shouldn't appear in mm. and I'm like, oh wait, something's going on here. And after that, I re- made that realization it was pretty easy for me to follow the timelines and what's going on where. I thought that perhaps Yennefer had the best... Uh, Arc, I would tend to sense, agree with the that. Most character development because Geralt doesn't have a character. <laughs> right. uh, he's the same gruff asshole he yeah. sort of is the whole time. Yeah, uh, I mean he has a slight arc, but like the idea is, it's not really about him. It's it's more of uh, uh, the, the world around him. Yeah, occurring around him. And uh, overall, it was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. I because again, I'm a huge fan of uh, her. I grew up on Kevin Sorbo. Uh, same here. And it brought me back right there. <laughs> like everyone's comparing to Game of Thrones, which is an unfair comparison. It's ridiculous because it's <laughs> it's not even attempting to be that. It's attempting to be a dark fantasy fun adventure series uh, with uh, a little bit more of an epic scope than Hercules did because they have bigger budgets nowadays. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm probably give it a two overall. Yeah, I think Go I'm gonna end up giving this a a two. Uh, not the strongest of twos by any means. No. They, 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 like, they, but like decent, are, like you're saying. There yeah. are, yeah, the, the, there are episodes where I'm kind of like, mm, I could do without this episode. But there are also episodes where I'm like, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And um, the it's interesting. Like they have the the monster of the week feel to it, as you mentioned. But every single one of the episodes plays into the larger story. Um. In ways, so it's not in just, ways that those don't yeah. sometimes. 
Uh, so it's True. a little bit different. I, I did have slight issues with the way that they dealt with the time differences, mostly stylistic issues, so I'll bring that up later for sure. Um, but it was, it was a, it was, you're, you're absolutely right. And like one of the first things I noticed about it, and I think I said this to you before you even mentioned it to me, was like when I first started watching, I saw like the first two or maybe three episodes and I was like, this feels like Hercules. <laughs> and, um, and I think that's, uh, can be a good thing for it. And it could be, a, and it can be a bad thing at some, at some points for it as well, which I'll go into. No, I feel um, you later on in this but yeah it, it, as as far as the overall storyline goes it's fine there's a through line that goes throughout the whole um ser- uh, the whole first season and it kind of has this feel of i, I like that you you do get the feel of like despite everybody's uh sincere <laughs> uh thinking that destiny doesn't exist that destiny is going to pay play a large part in all of their lives and that really comes through in terms of the storytelling mm. i will say um and you know it, it, as far as the rest of it goes it's it's just like an enjoyable romp through uh monster times <laughs> as we all remember the monster times of of humanity the conjunction of spears yeah yeah <clears throat> actually <laughs> oh, actually but anyways I, I see what you mean though yeah. but yeah it's 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 a it's a it's a fun show i'm probably i probably maybe i'll maybe i'm giving things away but i probably like the least of everybody here that doesn't mean i didn't like it sure so i had a good time with it what do you think chris uh <clears throat> I thought it was a really smart idea to go with the timelines the way they did. And the funny thing is we get to episode two where they introduce Yennefer. Mm-hmm. And right away – well, not right away, but as soon as they flashed her purple eyes, I'm like, that's Yennefer. And Beth's <laughs> read the book and she's played all the games. I've only played <laughs> Wild Hunt and the DLCs. And immediately it was like – I told her, I said, they've got to be doing different timelines instead of having somebody look pensively out a window and having a flashback or having the flashback mm. exposition episode, which is so fucking common. It makes me nauseous. Um, so I thought it was a really smart way they approached it. Now, the consequence of that is, and you guys have said this before, is Geralt's story is Monster of the Week. He doesn't really have an arc because you're waiting for these three uh, storylines to converge. So essentially, series uh, Princess Cirilla's is happening in the now, and then you've got Geralt's, but you don't know when, and it bounces his, back and forth. It's all over the place. His yeah. timeline's put into context because of Yennefer, and where where he is at any given time, his storyline is put into context because of Yennefer and because of Siri, not because of really himself. Right, but he doesn't meet Siri until the end, right? So they're never in the same right. scene. No, 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 no. But the whole point is because what happens in Siri's time, Siri's. T- Cirilla's timeline, because I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna sound like I'm talking about a series. Series, um, uh, her timeline kind of instructs where things that happen with her kind of instruct where things are with regard to Sintra, whether it exists or not. Um, so Geralt's plot had no choice but to be Monster of the Week because in any timeline, that's what he's going to be doing. So I guess that's a funny point, but sure. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I mean, he is. I mean, the, it really does hinge on um, Cirilla and uh, Yennefer. I thought they did a great job keeping those um, separate. I thought it was the best way to do it. Um, I guess we'll get more to that in style and when we discuss the different characters. But I'm going to give it a two. No, I'm going to give it a probably a stronger two than say like maybe C- Stevo did, but it definitely. There's issues we'll get into it, but overall, you know, I, I did enjoy it, um, so I'm going to give it a two. Yeah, I mean, I have agreed, so like, it, yes, it has the Hercules Monster of the Week feel, which I thought was like kind of like neat, even though it may be like a cheap nostalgia grab to a degree, and we brought that up, like whether or not that's like a good idea to do. Mm-hmm. But as probably, maybe you and me, Chris, are like the biggest fans of the franchise, of the Witcher mythology and lore in general, so I was going to it pretty excited, and I'm going to pretty much follow suit with a two, a decent to solid two, maybe strong even, but it did have its rocky little, like, it has shows a lot of promise, a lot of potential here. Now, granted, it's maybe a little bit more difficult to get into 
if you're coming in cold, if you don't have any like affiliation whatsoever. But I think they did pull it off quite nicely, and it does have like that sort of westworld ish feel. Like once you get a handle on like, okay, we're dealing with three timelines. Now I know like it's it's more obvious as it goes on which one is happening where. It's one, two, and three, right? And they're converging. Like obviously, storytelling tells us it's going to converge at a single point. And yeah, like throughout, it's just kind of a fun little adventurous romp, as you said, Steve-O, for the most part. And maybe that plays into a number of other questions. But yeah, overall, the story they told and set up, I think, is good enough for two. And I'm very invested in the season, the next season. So I came in knowing very little about Witcher, aside from what I you played a bit of the games, though, didn't you? Like I played a little bit of Witcher, the first Witcher. First one, right? And I'm upset that you can't collect women like trading cards <laughs> in this one. Sorry, buddy. But, um, <laughs> I'll be sarcastic, of course. But, um, the, uh, but I still understood. They, they made the bad guys very bad guy-ish. And yeah. they made, like, it, um, but I just had a question. What's your favorite monster of the week? Because I want to say that mine was actually the dragon. But because the reavers and the dwarves and all of them in there were so much fun... Mm, yeah, so well, it's ridiculous. It's felt, cool. I'll say this: it felt super Witcher s because that's what those uh, races are like. Like yeah. that's what the but, mythology of the lore of the world is pretty much set up to be. That But also felt very Hercules esque. Yeah. That yeah. episode for sure. Dude. It's so much fun though. It's no, like yeah, no watching these groups bicker amongst themselves. Yeah. I actually wish there was a bit more of the monster week, if you will. Like, <laughs> I think maybe Strigo was like the scariest, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then. Uh, I don't know. There wasn't like the the guy that was chasing Yennefer with his like little insect buddy. Mm. Oh, was yeah. pretty cool. The random mage. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I th- I think that dragon one was like maybe my favorite like monster of the week. Yeah, because it, it almost right. felt like it harkens Twilight back Zone so yeah. right, like very heavily to the Hercules kind of stuff. Yeah. Without like, oh, I was gonna say without question that one because as you said before, it does feel the most like something you'd have in a game. And yeah. it, but but the whole point is, I mean, I think. You know, I haven't read these books. As I said, what I know from the books is what Beth told me. And um, and this season, sorry, specifically is more based, again, not so much on the games of well, the original all, source material. Yeah, these are based on the source materials. But there have been – there were little things I wish I could – I'd taken down where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a nod to the sure. game or whatever. But apparently in the first book, there are th- – basically, it's three different stories in one. Yeah. And I don't know how they handled it there, but they handled it really well here. Um, but, yeah, I like the dragon one, too. I thought that was really – nice little subversion where it's just like okay here's this really stupid wooden scaffolding thing on the side of a mountain <laughs> who's gonna fall off sure. and and you know so it, all the information was there like the two bodyguards Handling. um his two bodyguards when he's in human form were saying that he's beautiful and everything and this is like this little man and it, this little older man. He's the most beautiful. Yeah, he's the most recall. beautiful. <laughs> but, I mean, like, the information is gross. there, but it's kind of like, uh, as to the reveal at the, at the end of this episode. Um, but I, I liked it. It was very sure. it was very charming. It had a good, it mm. was a great it, that it was basically, yeah. he's a it distraction. It could be a bit campy, sure. He sure. hired Geralt to be basically a distraction. Sure. I think maybe, like, if we're, before we move on, uh, my favorite episode possibly was the banquet one. Because that yeah. like felt very witchery, like the hedge it, with the hedge knight. Yes. Oh yeah, the hedge knight, yes. the hedgehog knight. <laughs> because there was the, it wasn't a direct one to one, but there was again a mission or a quest that was very similar to that in the games. And like as you said, they did sprinkle nods and winks to mm. that th- that fan base as well. Uh, I do have one last thing to say. Okay. Then. Uh it's about the time I think. They the first episode uh, kills off ninety percent of the cast, <laughs> uh, and I'm like. This is bold, Boop. <laughs> and the characters I like the most, especially uh, the Queen's husband. Uh, yes. I, I liked Chronon him a Crate, lot. Like, uh, he's a very charming yeah. character. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I just got rid of everybody. And then, oh, okay, now when I realize the yeah. timeline, we're going to see all these people again. <laughs> so that was actually a very clever a nice subversion there. on my yeah. part. Yeah, that's right. not bad. Uh, yeah. That's right. nice. Yeah, well done, boys. So two, two's for plot all around. That'll bring us to themes, and that'll be you, Steven. Yeah, so I, th- I think, like... Uh, I guess, like, the main theme that I take from this is kind of becoming, uh, you know, becoming what you are. Like, there's a lot of, like, this idea of Yennefer coming into her power. There's the idea of Ciri um, understanding her family and, like, you know, Mm. uh, just going out there, like, what would you do for, what like, the the idea of like what would you do for power what would you do for uh destiny what would you do for your what, what would you do to like protect your family protect or your family or or like you know honor your family in in serious case i guess 
Um, so I think there, I think that the themes in this were actually pretty strong. And I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, it's a, it's a series, not a movie. So like, there's a lot more that goes into it than mm-hmm. that. Um, you have uh, Geralt being Geralt, Geralt, Geralt. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I don't but know why I said had, Geralt. People pronounce it various uh, ways. So <laughs> whatever one is like, comfortable to you. Wrong. But um, yeah, you have Geralt. You know, kind of being just a a mirror for all of the other characters mm-hmm. in this. Who like he, he kind of shows them who they are. I think a lot, and that's an interesting thing for your main character which i guess is like a fairly standard trope but like i think that this show does a decent job with that so i, I i'm gonna give like i don't think that the themes are like mind bending or anything in this but you're saying but, they're handled pretty solid. but i think yeah but i think they're good enough for a one and, and I'm, I'm gonna yeah i'll turn it over yeah so i mean uh, garrett himself says a number of times like sometimes it's money sometimes it's monsters really both yeah right so like Right. Like that's like, but the great, like the moral grayness <laughs> that is the theme. <laughs> has that's always been the case. It's gonna come into my dialogue stuff. conversation. So, yeah, so like, of course, like there's a lot of sub themes to it, Steve. Where like, Jennifer in particular, like uh, similar to like, so on date of this recording, we had just did Little Women mm-hmm. of like a woman gaining her agency, right, and like learning her where she belongs and what she wants to do, like enacting her ambitions. Girl is, of course, a superhuman, like, uh, sort of genetic engineered. You know, beyond regular human, so he's looked down upon. He's looked as if he's the other. He's treated like not that well, but right. yet people need him to take care of monsters because they can't handle himself. And then within that, sometimes like, oh, some crazy monster, some devil monster is stealing our stuff. No, it's just like another starving, like uh, an elf and um, and a Sylvan, elves, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm trying to remember. All, there's so many monsters in like the fucking bestiary of Witcher, right? So like, some of them are just like they're just trying to get fed and survive they're not trying to kill you per se i do like that that most of the monster the monsters in this aren't really monsters yeah. that is a good but i'm term. saying like that always has been a thematic element of but all witcher monsters yeah sometimes of they all are. the witcher mythology and lore and i think they they no exception here i think they handle that pretty well on top again enfold it into everything you said but that to me is like the strongest and like one they keep like kind of bringing up and and just sort of making you question whether or not this like scary thing is actually a monster or it's more of a tragic circumstance well that's the interesting thing in terms of that i'm sorry to go no. again right now but i want to say this before i forget it you know like the the most monstrous monster i guess of this season this the strega huh. like the most like stereotypical monster sure. right is like the least uh deserving of its fate or yeah, whatever exactly. you know like had nothing to do with it from like from birth it's cursed with this and then once it's relieved of that you know you get you get that whole story but yeah. like you know that, that's I, I think that's a really interesting thing that plays in the theme so too good all right so one uh dark fantasy is often takes pot shot at high fantasy Mm. <laughs> and they occasionally do that in this. That is true, yeah. Which I enjoy. Uh, it's a good little snipe, yeah. Like, uh, the famously, the, uh, the knight who, uh, in the dragon episode, who kills a beast that was just oh uh, hungry, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then gets stabbed in the back while taking a shit. Like, it's just mocking uh, high fantasy, and I like that a lot. And Actually, I think that's perhaps where Gra- the comparison to Game of Thrones comes in uh, best, mm. is that Game of Thrones was a realistic... Uh, jab at high fantasy where this is a fantasy taking jab at high fantasy um but i want to talk about destiny and family here Mm. because uh i think that the fact that because what family you belong to is before because jennifer never had one i mean she had a family but it wasn't her family she was ostracized anyway wasn't actually even actually her family though right like yeah uh, that's true but they uh but like she's striving for that she can't have a child anymore but she gave that up for her powers or her beauty and then regrets it later on. You have Gerald who is uh, a lone man, but now, or whatever, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry finds <laughs> that. He, Geralt of Rivia, man. <laughs> Go on. Jerry finds that he uh, <laughs> now has a daughter uh, he, that he, uh, he wasn't expecting. So there's that whole like aspect of family. But the destiny surprise. thing is fascinating to me. Especially the was gift of surprise. Or, Love, or surprise. Love surprise. Love, which is, like which a is b- such a fascinating uh Pro- prophetic thing because generally prophecies are bullshit but that whole like people who don't believe in destiny get screwed over so example of that the queen has to give up 
Siri from the Law of Surprises to Jerry. Or uh, uh, Geralt? Yeah. Yeah. Geralt, yeah. And she doesn't want to do it. So she, and then when she goes to war, her, uh, the ship, uh, the ships that were coming in to back her up get hit by a storm. Was that, uh, fate? Well, we find out that it was the mage. Actually, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> was that part of her? Like, it, it seems like. Is that also part to, of Destiny, anyways, you're saying? And that's what it seems yeah. like Destiny was punishing her with that. But it turns out it wasn't Destiny, but was it Destiny? It's very mm. interesting, like, how they keep incorporating this the idea s- of slightly that. throughout yeah. it. Mm. And, whether you don't know if it's if destiny actually particularly exists or not, I mean they kind of go down on by them reuniting us, uh, uh, Siri and uh, Geralt at the end, uh, uh, re- finding each other. But they I hug mean, each other sight unseen. Yeah. <laughs> they know who each other they because of are. because of destiny. Yeah, you're all, at least he, he's, he's, he's obviously a witcher. <laughs> um, Fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he's a very distinct person. The White um, Wolf. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, but that, I like that uh, that interplay of you not knowing how much oh. is really destiny or not throughout this. That's a fair point. I like it. Yep. Oh, anything else, Chris? Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, oh, does that mean you're giving a one E? I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just real quick, law of surprises is such a great way of saying the checks in the mail. It's just like, <laughs> here, I don't have any money, but here. No, I owe you. It's yes. like I owe you. It's, 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 it's an IOU. We should it, start employing it in real life in all various situations. It, it's an IOU that's be careful what you wish for because <laughs> no. people get screwed on this. So, but I, I, the one thing, uh, the thing they did great about this, which, you know, as a fan of, um, last Witcher game is, uh, this all goes into perspective. I mean, whether it's the way they're, Doing it with the timelines, the way they're telling, giving the narrative with the three different timelines, or as we've said, as you said, Ian, is it is it destiny? Is it or is it the mage? Is the mage playing into the destiny, or is destiny part of the mage? It's like all these things of perspective is where you're sitting, how much information you have, you know, as to whether a creature is really a monster, if it's just hoping to survive. I mean, there's th- this story. You know, whether it's the video game or whether it's, um, you know, this thing or what I've known from the books, do a really good job of having a complete world from the perspectives of different people and different, which is, which is true to life. In a, in a fantasy story, it's something, things tend to be a little more concrete and there's a lot of that, you know, foreshadowing, you know, all the, all, all the author's hands, so to speak. You could tell there, there's a writer's room behind this, but the, in this one, they did a really good job with that. So I'm giving it a very strong one. Right. I just want to add one more thing. Like the law of surprise thing, if you guys recall, Geralt almost like all pan- like he's like, I owe you my life. What do you want? He's like, whatever, law of surprise, whatever that guy just said. Yeah, whatever the fuck <laughs> has happened. He, I don't give, yeah. he doesn't give a you fuck this, about you know it. Terrible all. Sh- like, that's, I was kind of like put off by that because he's like, you know that terrible shit that just happened? I'll do that again. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, come on, man. He, he almost says he does yeah. it again and then chooses a beer. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He could have done yeah. it a third yeah. time. Yeah. We'll come to it. But it's so true to his character. I thought it was a really funny moment, but like, it does kick off like you know, a whole chain of events just because he offhandedly invoked it. Because yeah. he had no other, he's like, whatever, it's the first thing I can think of. But so anyway, <laughs> so given that, um, that's ones all around, and I'll move on to antagonist. Maybe it is destiny, or maybe it's just, again, like, the dark... It, it, again, I feel like if... I'm pretty sure when they were, like, announcing this that they kind of wanted it to be, like, the next Game of Thrones. Now, I'm not sure if it's a fair comparison at this point. It's not. It's n- yeah. <laughs> it's not. It, at this not point, that. it is not. <laughs> but I feel like they want to, like, fill that void, essentially, left by, like... You know, gritty, dark fantasy, etc. They should have made it much right. more p- political Listen, and much I understand. less. Uh, They're cheesy, filling the void but, left but by Xeno you know, Warrior I, I, Princess. Yeah, I understand and, uh, that. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, it's not as like as high concept as that would be. So like, I'm not sure if like it's every monster Geralt has to fight because that's what it is. But like, just the hostile world, and again, like the history of the world is that like all these monsters are there like not accidentally, like like the the worlds collided, and so like elves just showed up like when they like. They got thrown out of their home worlds. So, mm-hmm. like, now it's all these, like, different variations, you know, different factions trying to coexist in one world. And, like, then racism flares up. There's a, there was a, even mentioned there was a genocide of the elves, which is why they're trying to survive anyway. I so wish they all- had talked about this in the show at all. They did. <laughs> they did. Uh, they did. Uh, and kinda. I guarantee you they'll, they'll explore it more. But <laughs> I'm just saying it's, they had to set it up. It's part of it. It's part of, like, the history of this. It's part of the lore. So, on that front, like, it's just, like, the struggles of a high fantasy world, like, which of course if you remove all the monster shit like it's the same kind of thing but i think the destiny thing is a good point like of course we we've discussed this a lot the concept of you know 
does fate really exist? And if so, how does it like work in everyone's lives? So with that gone, you. But to build off of that, I think it's also, and this is actually kind of Game of Thrones this year, is the idea of enslaving yourself to the concept, of the destiny. concept of it, yeah. because a lot of the problems mm-hmm. come out of if we're making this law of surprises, whether it has a supernatural impact or not. But even more important than that is Nilfgaard. No well, fine. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, and that's what was going to be my bad here. Uh, but they're doing all of this to fulfill. Uh, no, it's definitely Nilfgaard and not Nilfheim. Nilfheim oh, is a I'm thing. I'm sorry. Nilfheim is. Uh, yeah. It's from God of War. God. Um, well, Greece. Don't question my <laughs> Witcher of knowledge, Nordic. sir. All right, I'm sorry. Nordic. Yeah, you're right. Um, sorry. My, my apologies. Uh, but like they're following this. Pro- vague right. prophecy. Right. Don't you the, the, the big sure they're going to be coming and marching in the next season. But. Like they're doing this for uh, fulfilling their destiny, and th- that goes to that uh, point as well. Feeds back saying. in, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I see them as the big antagonist of this, and I, I get that they are think that they are on in the right, but that's the best antagonist anyway, right? Is like they think that they're doing the right thing. Uh, and they are antagonizing the protagonist for right? like, God. Maybe maybe they are doing the right thing. Who the hell knows? We only get to see. The other side of the coin uh, that you toss the Witcher, and um, <laughs> sorry, I had go to. on. <laughs> and, no, that would hurt. And I'm uh, to go, uh, go on. But you know, y- you only get to see that side of things. Sure. So Nilfgaard is the clear antagonist of of our like persona of yeah. our heroes yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, and I think that. I don't know. Like they're they're uneven in terms of an antagonist. They're I, I think towards the end of the season they're pretty good. I'm not sure they're built up enough for me to love them as an, like they're built up to a degree, mm. but I don't know if they're built up enough for me to believe them as like a really good antagonist at the end. Um, I'm probably gonna give this a soft one, but. Mm. I'm not sure, and 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 I, like I view them as the clear antagonist. Like the, there is like destiny can be the antagonist, that that whatever. But you know me, I, I always look for sure. the solid, the actual like, like who they are fighting. Yeah, in I look for the physical concrete reality. antagonist. Sure, sure. If I can find one, Goody. so Goody. their leader is basically Stannis Baratheon, um, in the thing that he is a yeah, firm it's a very good analogy. He but he's actually this. badass on the field of battle. Yeah, I, like, guess, I, like, I was actually impressed by him as a villain. Uh, he had one episode where he gets to be the highlight of that. Uh, yeah. Oh, the doppelganger episode. Yeah. And I thought, like, I, I see why he's a feared warrior, because he's actually a good... Uh, one episode, he, you see him do hand-to-hand, one you see him as a field commander. Well, you see I that in the business, beginning, where he's, like, yeah. just, like, picking people. Like, mm-hmm. he's he's almost too perfect of a warrior for me, yeah. right? He's like, oh, I'm just going to shoot every arrow that I shoot. We'll shoot somebody through the neck. Mm. <laughs> and then the uh, his uh, high vizier um, that uh, uh, the sorcerer chick. Yeah, yeah. Who, I, I like how Fringilla, you see her, who's from the all of Gloria. I like her, her progression even over the years. Yeah, I think that she's a more interesting character. But her Mel, his Melisandre, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> I mean, one hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty good. 100%. It's a pretty good uh, correlation there. Yeah, for sure. But I think that there's more proof to her powers than Melisandre had. Um, <laughs> but <Yeah>. um, <laughs> like. I, I think that they make and to be and granted, it's not complex. I mean, they're likable villains. I got to know them over the course of the thing, but uh, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be. It's like it's like Hera coming down. Uh, yeah, uh, to you just see her out. eyes, like you've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like you, you, you can almost see them uh, twisting their mustaches at certain yeah. points in this. Yeah. Like, sure, but, but that's the point. This that's the point. Exactly, yeah. that makes sense. So go on, Chris. This the first season. of This is. Basically, the um, uh, it's a it's a pro it's a prologue essentially. Sure. Mm-hmm. So in that case, it's more it's more difficult to develop an antagonist to to me because they're basically putting all the pieces into right. They got they got to set it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So set, I'm, set I'm, I'm I'm like a, I'm kind of back and forth on this uh, because on the one hand, by design, I there is a threat there to everybody. You know where the threats are at any given time. And I'm not talking monster of the week threats. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it's just, I, I maybe I'm going to come down on your side, Steve, or maybe they're just not quite developed just because of design. But given the fact that, you know, Nilfgaard, they did start this off with, 
you know, no, I mean, there was no, a big siege at the first. There, episode. Yeah, they're for like in the first half hour of the film. There's like, you know, so yeah, I'll give it a soft one. Okay, See, are you going to a one officially? Yeah, as well? I, mean, uh, I, I they they did exactly what they needed to in this situation. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. you can sort of both. My last thought is you can take both the uh, physical threat of Nilfgaard and also the metaphysical threat of uh mm-hmm. of destiny and fate and so forth, and it they both are there. Good enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't you tell us about Geralt of Rivia, Chris? Actually, I was going to say Geralt was a protagonist, but I don't know who mentioned it first, but after discussing three timelines, I am going to say there's three protagonists to this. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, Geralt, as I said before, is the um, glue that holds He's them sort together. He's sort of like the Mad Max of this world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exa- perfect <laughs> yeah. analogy. Perfect yeah. analogy. Um, because he is the one with the monster of the week. Without him, we get to see – With through him, we get to see – the day-to-day workings of community life and that, and uh, mercenary aspects Is and it community how, life. Yeah, community life, Com- like between the communities when he goes to different life in the towns, life so in the forth. towns. Sure. Yeah, like um, you, you get a real sense of um, uh, the world through him, even though like his arc is not <coughs> as the is the less of the three. The plus of an arc. Yeah. But without and and Yennefer's kind of pulling up some Siri um some Siri is pulling up some history on her end as we go through her arc. Mm. You're seeing her grow up, but you're also seeing the climate change where she until her and Geralt's storylines Australia time to, converge. Did the converge <laughs> timelines. Yeah, I'm <laughs> start I'm sitting here like trying to remember I know what you meant, ex- but <laughs> Yeah, all the all the timelines trying Sorry. to converge. Um so, and and series telling you basically what's happening now, and you're getting a. So I, I'm gonna say all three of them. I'm gonna give them a one, um, because I th- well I, as I said I think we all agree that Geralt has. I, I think it's by design that he doesn't really have much of an arc. I, I think she was important for the world building. I think he's the catalyst, as you might like to say, for everything else to happen around him. Uh, yeah, I was gonna more say he's the Gluto kind of. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we're watching him wander to his call of destiny. <laughs> yeah. And he, he, he hasn't. He's taking a roundabout way to get to it. A, he's yeah. taking a roundabout. Hero's journey. Yeah. He hasn't achieved that yet. You're just he's meandering <laughs> to it. <laughs> That's a good point. That's fair. Yeah, but with with um when Yennefer Yennefer's story really kind of uh, solidifies where we are. I think any- hers quickly over jumps his. Yeah, I agree because with her, you really get a sense of where we are historically. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I got to give them all a one. They did it. Did it as a unit. They do a really great job of fleshing out the world with in, in terms of timeline, in terms of you know world building, character mm-hmm. who's good, who's bad, what all the gray areas are. You know, so I'm going to give them one. Uh, yeah, and uh, so this is an interesting thing. This is an interesting question because you have Yennefer, who I really like. I'm going to start with her because I think she's the strongest. Anya Chalatra uh, is her actual actress, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Almost, just to cer- give her, just almost to give her certainly shadow. not, but it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I like it. she'll. I, I think she'll forgive you <laughs> or never hear this. Um, Henry Cavill as Geralt is interesting. I can feel how much he loves this character. <laughs> yeah, that's a, damn it, you was going to say I that. can feel it. Go on. I don't think he's a great actor, but I can feel how much he really wants to do a good job in this. And, like, maybe he is a really good actor, but this is not the way to do it for him. Can I rebut this real quickly? Sure. It, I see what you mean. But it fits because Geralt is like emotionally withdrawn. So like, sure. <laughs> so like yeah. you're saying like he's a wooden actor, but Geralt's kind of wooden anyways. But like, I mean, I I feel like. This has been done better. That's like right. this type of anyway, thing. Has that's been all I want to say. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, I'm not taking any. I'm not taking any comments, Chris. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> well, I'm gonna um, comment later, and that's fine. <laughs> and uh, Siri, oh, I thought did a good job, but you don't really get much from her character. They didn't give her much to do, which I, I thought was a complaint, and I kind of agree with you that. Good. And it's and it's fine. Like I get it. She, we're setting her up for next season, I guess, or whatever. But mm-hmm. like, I thought that she did good. But without Yennefer, I think this gets a zero. With her, I think it's a soft one. Fair enough. Still one, though, at the end of the day because of that. Yeah. Good oh, point. I was just going to say to you, the w- couple things I was going to say, not to the protagonist, but the performances, I do know that he loves the um, material. I, and you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. It's great. But the problem, the problem was, 
And I think you said it right. You can tell because there are certain times where he's really natural and other times where it's like, oh, God, you know, it's like, yeah, was there not another take of that? Yeah, because I I personally uh, (laughs) I thought when I I thought it was going to be two different actresses playing Yennefer. Uh And I think that actress has so dynamic. She really carries herself. She has quite a range. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was two different people I, hmm. until I looked it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, us too. So, um, no, I just wanted to bring to that to Henry yeah. Cavill. I mean, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with this, but I agree with you 100% on that one. I mean, for sure, Henry Cavill is wanking himself off and having this part. Like, I mean, it's clear from the get-go. Yeah. But I still think, like, knowing again, knowing the character <laughs> and being quite familiar with him, because of that, it lends like a Her- Herculean charm, sure. if you will, yeah. to it. And, yeah, I certainly think agree that Yennefer is by far the most interesting character, and they do more with her. And Ciri's just sort of there. But they do collectively join a trio, and I'll give them a one. He's going to channel yeah. his inner Kevin Sorbo soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I actually think Ciri did have a lot of growth during this, moving from a very isolated royal existence mm-hmm. to learning how to survive to uh, learning how to put aside her uh, royal upbringing to become more of the like sh- street urchin type. Sure. Um, granted, has that been done before? Certainly has been done in many high fantasies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or in fantasies in general, yeah. But you know what? Like, like, whatever, I, I enjoyed it. It's still a trope her. that works. I agree with well. that. I agree yeah. with that. I think that yeah. that's a good point. And I think the actress pulled it off enough. And uh-huh. I think they did a smart move of having someone play off all the characters regularly. So you had the, uh, I, I think it was an elf yeah. boy. That, the elf uh, urchin, if you will. With her. Yeah. You Duh. had uh, uh, Dandelion, who I'm going to call him that, or Jasker, uh, <laughs> Dandelion. to play off of uh, 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 Geralt. I think that, that that was a smart move. But And he had Geralt to play off of uh, Yennefer. <laughs> <laughs> he had Roach to play off of, which is his horse, of course. But anyway, sure. All right, so I'll give it a one. One overall. All right, Eve, so you just mentioned a couple of them. Why don't you go on with the secondary supporting cast? <sighs> so there are, <laughs> there are some good... <laughs> actors here mm-hmm. like the dwarves were having a lot of fun uh, in <laughs> they the roles. felt like the great. witcher world dwarves for yeah sure. no they felt they felt great i want to party with those people without a lot of fun. question um yeah. i i i liked the uh i really enjoyed the one sorcerer you meet at the first is kind of shady and then he comes back and it's still kind of <laughs> shady yeah that was a nice little world building um experience I mentioned I, I like the uh, Queen's lover or uh, husband. Uh, Cronon Crate. He's a character from the games for sure. But overall, I'm going to have maybe have to give this a zero because in more often than not, it's TNT level extras. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Like, uh, like, uh, USA no, Network. I know. Type, like uh, you're right. Like I, that's this is the one that's tripping me up because. I'm almost in the same boat. I think the secondary characters were performed well, but the way they're like sort of inserted into the story have that feel to them. And that means they're almost like not a joke, but not all that serious either. So I'm, with that, I'm super on the fence about it. I can see either way. I, I, as a fanboy, I want to give it a one, but as a more objective, like remove myself, I can see the zero. So with that, you clearly want to say something. Go ahead. Ian. I completely agree with you, but instead of USA or TNT, what I would say is they are CW Hercules level <laughs> secondary characters, <laughs> and like the secondary characters were just kind of jokes a lot in that they and, were often and, throwaways, and sometimes they were really great, and those ones usually came back. But <laughs> just like occasionally, get an actor who knows what they're doing and, in a role there or an actress. There are some like it's you tough, know dude. you know like we we used to have this thing that we said a lot more often than we have recently but where like if you love one secondary character then you got to give him a one but in a in a series i don't think you can do that no. i loved a couple of them the uh yes yes gear is that his name uh dandelion dandelion sure dandelion uh he was great i thought he did a good job and like they picked they picked the right actor to play that mm-hmm. part and i thought he did a good job and some of the throwaway secondary characters were good too but some of them were just like not great and like i don't want to like it's it's probably partially to blame on the writing and partially to blame on the on the actors i guess 
I don't want to like shit on an actor for being in this role because it's it's sometimes I I could see that sometimes the script would was a little hard to work with, but yeah. um, I I don't think that I can in good conscience give the supporting characters a one of this. Like in the first episode, the thugs on the street. Like, yeah. Right, like granted, like maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe they're going for the overacting. It's and every the thug you've ever seen and everything like it. Yeah. But that's the thing is, You're it, right, it's, like, it it it. it if the Witcher has loftier ambitions than just being... They need to do better. They need to do better. Than. Yeah. And I think it's a time to have loftier ambitions because it hasn't yet embraced it for being... It's not... I don't want to say a train wreck, but it's not enjoying... Uh, it's not... Uh, hmm. uh, it hasn't bought into its silliness. Right, yet. right. Uh, and if it goes full, I am totally for it going full, Achilles. <laughs> but... Um, it's kind of on the fence as well. What do you think, Chris? Um... I'm gonna say, I see your points, but I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> Sounds gonna, like a one. Yeah, it's gonna get a one. I'm gonna get a softer one because I understand your points, but I felt that each character had a a supporting character that really helped develop their character. And I'm really gonna focus on Yeskier, um, because okay. for, I mean I agree he was perfectly cast, mm. and his ballads were. Just bad enough. <laughs> they but, felt like but, but, the original but, character. But they were clever as well. So it wasn't like somebody just writing a bunch of bullshit beat crap. I mean, there was some nuance to it. But what I liked about him, what, you know, his goal was to help uh, dispel the stigma of... of um, against witchers. Against witchers and so forth. And I think I really felt that his character brought something to the world, brought something to the understanding of witchers, why they do need um, basically PR. PR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, as I said, I thought he could have been the easiest character to fuck up. I mean, they could have just made him really came close. A, a joke. He was but, a foppish fool, but like that's but, sort of what his the, character is anyway. Yeah, but he gotta, is a foppish we gotta, fool. We're going to post a link to the uh, Toss a Coin remix, huh? which yeah, yeah. if you guys haven't heard that yet, no, but um, I'll play it later tonight. <laughs> It'll be our ending. No, movie. but what, I, what I'm gonna say is, I, I I agree with you for the most part, but um, I, I feel that you know, and I'm, that's why I'm focusing on him because it, it was the most impactful to me. Was for all of Geralt's, it was the most well rounded. W- with for all for all of Geralt's grunting and not say, you know <laughs> being a, a largely silent protagonist. Um, I think I think yeah, um. Dandelion uh, really did his job well, and I, I feel that Geralt would have would have suffered as a character were it not for he had his. Roach. Yeah, he needed somebody to play off here, but like, <laughs> yeah. it's tough because, like, for example, only I quite like uh, Yennefer's like um, Yennefer's like instructors, like a sorceress uh, uh, mentor. Tissia. sure. Like, she was a good character, but she did feel a bit one dimensional as well. And like all the, like the random townsfolk, even like the the um the queen and her and her. King husband, like yes, they were well performed, but they what the script, as you said, gave them work with was very, very cardboard, like cookie cutter mm-hmm. in a sense. So, like, I kind of have to temper my enthusiasm, perhaps on this question, and we'll have to agree that, like, yes, while there were some good characters, Daniel and Yasker probably being the best, I might have to come down, and I end up and going to end up coming down on a softer zero, but zero for secondary. Cool. Maybe they'll improve. Maybe we'll get more of them, more well-rounded next time. But for what is there at this point. It's just a little sillier than it should be. Mm. Yeah. Right. And schlock was the term I was talking Yes. He yeah. yes. doesn't embrace his inner yeah. schlock yet. For sure. I'm like, even the, for yeah, right. even the dragon guy was very schlocky. Mm. But, but he's one of those actors who knew exactly yeah. what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. He was chewing, literally it. chewing the scenery. <laughs> there is, yeah, there's definitely like an obvious, like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. This guy has, like, thinks that this is a serious yeah. role. Sure. And that that kind of like got if, me. If only Henry Cavill thought it was a serious role and everyone else made it like schlock. <laughs> Perhaps that would have been That'd be amazing. But so like this is an interesting one because that'll segue us into dialogue and that'll be you, Steve O. Uh yeah, dialogue was not good in this show. Mm. Uh I did not like the dialogue. I mean maybe you guys did, maybe you guys could give it a one, but I will say that this is probably the weakest part of everything. It's like the, the the world building was good, the everything else was good um to a degree. But there was a lot of, uh, like, you know, sometimes there's, like, this silence 
in movies that's like really meaningful or or TV shows. Uh, that wasn't the silence that was had in this. <laughs> like every time that girl like refused to answer a question, I awkward. found myself getting more and more <laughs> like aggravated that he wouldn't fucking say anything. It's like, dude, this is a direct question. You could just say something now. Or you could just say yes. You don't have to worry about exposition at that level. <laughs> <laughs> there were like yes, no questions that he refused to answer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. Or like sometimes he would just... You know, I was like, I was, I was glad when he would grunt at someone. I was like, at least he said something. This I've made time. a noise Jesus at all. Jesus Christ! Sure. Um, and like there were, you know, there were there were a couple like good and interesting lines that came through the course of the season, but more often than not, it was like almost cringeworthy stuff. That like that like what was that what was the line that you quoted before that all of all three of us laughed at i'm pretty sure like as soon as you quoted it i, I forget what it was like yeah i think you i think you said sometimes there's like, monsters sometimes yes. there's money yeah rarely yeah, yeah, both yeah. and i was like come, come on <laughs> but i kind of like that one at least but i do see where you're Embrace going the schluck. could be yeah it yeah, could be a better line in a either a show that embraced its schlock a little bit more or uh built that Was into to, the like, script yeah. a little bit better but it was just kind of like a throwaway, like, this doesn't belong here type of line. I really, like, I tried with this show to enjoy the dialogue. And, like, the dialogue was one of the parts that I just didn't like the you. most. And probably Completely what, valid, man. And probably one of the reasons that, like, I I feel like I like this show less than most people that have seen it that are huge nerds that I like. There's a very specific group of people that really love <laughs> this fucking section. show. Yes. And I'm like... Uh, theoretically part of that group, but like I am also kind of on the outside of it now, <laughs> specifically having watched this show nice. because of that. But like I think that there's something about the dialogue that just was like grating to me. It was like this could have been, this should have had somebody else do a rewrite. I feel like, and I think the dialogue could have been a lot tighter and a lot like more clever and punched up and and better. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have to give it a zero. That's I agree for the most part. I just want to make one little caveat to that. I thought one of the very interesting things they did was in handling progression of timelines and different timelines, they did a good job of situating the time frame through dialogue. So you have a person mm-hmm. offhandedly say, Oh, Niflgard is approaching. Yeah, well, uh, Niflgard will so never get here. Yeah, yeah. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. True. And like you can, you can. If you're paying attention, you yep. really like feels like because you're seeing events that happen that are events you have seen earlier on, and now you're seeing the progression of the build up to that through mm. uh, people talking at an inn or a tavern, and like uh, and it feels like this is actually a filled world with where events are happening. And, and I'm going to get into another a problem I have with this in style, but. The, the the timeline fit well, uh, and I think they in terms of that dialogues. Mm-hmm. That's the one credit I have to give to it. But are you are you both giving the, a zero overall? Probably, yes. All right. All right. So allow me to jump in if you don't mind. <laughs> I get you. Allow like, me to retort. And again, I'm I'm when I watch it, I was like, you know what? That's pretty solid. Oh, that's a funny line. It's a good line. But having been a bit removed from it, having talked it out, you're right. It's it's more slocky and like. It jars with itself because it's trying to be serious. So, like again, removing my f- my fandom blinders, if you will. Yeah, it certainly could be improved. And like, while there was some good moments here and there, like that, which sort of sometimes bleed into style here and there. Like overall, it just could have been a little bit more improved. And hopefully, they do get maybe some a, a couple writers, some group to come in and punch it up whoever for next season, so it does fit into like. The grittiness, but has like a little bit of dry humor. Like Geralt, it has always had a dry humor as a character, but it comes off like again sillier than it should. I think more often than not. Mm. So like, yeah, as you guys talked out, it sort of convinced me. Soft as zero, maybe, but in all good faith, even me being probably the biggest fan of this franchise, or perhaps neck and neck with you, Chris, I still think you guys made valid enough points to give it a soft as zero here. And with that, what are you giving it? <laughs> I'm gonna give it. Credit, because I agree with you guys. I'm giving it a zero. Um, but, <laughs> but <laughs> no, but the thing is, I, I do think you'd need somebody to punch it up because I think the actors really elevated it and whoever directed it did because mm. stuff that was right I on. I think we're different directors each episode. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying is whoever was directing it because the stuff, the, di- the banter between, the banter between, um, Geralt and Yennefer 
was, you know, right on the money. And, and that was probably some of the highlights. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was, but they really kept, and you probably can cut, uh, fault the director for some of the, uh, the, the way the, uh, dialogue was handled. Um, but one of the things I'm going to say, one of the strongest points about the dialogue is, and maybe this goes to style, maybe this goes partially to plot was, I love the fact when they introduced a character, you may not know that if, if you're a fan, you might know who the character is, but if you're watching this out, there was nobody like saying like character walks in. Oh, hello there, Yennefer. How are you today? You know, I mean, yeah. you didn't, they never said Yennefer. Jesus. She was, it was her, it was her, um, <laughs> It was. Her, she showed up in episode two. Yeah, I know. I see. Um, <laughs> I, could, I, I, yeah, I could see on the on the, <laughs> the spike on the audio. Uh, the spike on the audio. Thank you. Um, but she it wasn't. She showed up in episode two. I don't think anybody mentioned her name till episode three. Um, I think uh, to the credit where credit is due, they really could have as much as this needed punching up. It really could have been worse. Sure. I know that was I know, like, I know that's there, like buddy. damning with faint praise, but also so but, Ian zero one zero. Right. But but yeah, I'm, I I, I'm, him I do zero. have to give him I do have to give him credit for not having to do let's every time a character walks on having to give it that sure yeah I mean good Expe- for them Expe- they didn't say the name of the character as soon as they walked into the room they didn't they didn't like smother you in exposition but yeah. the rest of right. it was like mm. all right so that's zeros all around we can agree on upon that and that in fact will bring me to style. Which I think I'm gonna pretty much give a solid one, maybe soft even, but I think it looked pretty good overall. Yes, some of the monster CGI was a little like not as big budgety as what we're used to, or like you know, I've been like ingrained to expect. But I think it's like it convinced me that we were in the Witcher world. The set, the costume design was fucking awesome. The fights were pretty good. I thought like the way Geralt fought, like again, did sort of remin like, um encapsulate the way that I view like that character and his fighting style, if you will, and again with the monsters he's encountered. And just overall, like some of the cool sets, like when they're going to the dragon thing, like the big hill, like in the forest and up the mountain. And, like you're, you're sort of standard high fantasy ish kind of stuff, but can believably convince me that we're in this world that I've been exposed to before. And like, yeah, you might say like it's sort of like generic medieval, like, you know, landlocked England from like twelve hundred or whatever. But like, it's exactly what it's, it is. But you've seen that it's, well, it's worked sure. before, and like, it's, fantasy, it's just how it is. Fantasy. Yeah. So like, given that, and like, look, this little wow. touches here and there, like even the magic stuff, the portal stuff was pretty cool. Like that again is a thing, not necessarily specific to The Witcher, but they use that kind of stuff, and it was cool. And like the, the siege at the end, or like the big battle, right? That was pretty sweet. So what do you think overall? While there was some cheesy, like maybe like cracks in the facade of. The style, like specifically the CGI shit. Overall, I think they did a good job. Set design, costume design, convinced me. No problem with it. I don't care if they use puppets for the rest of this. <laughs> it is fun. I'm gonna give it a one <laughs> okay. solely for the last battle mm. uh, and the siege thing because they were really clever how they used magic. Mm. I mean, cleverer than they deserve. To, to <laughs> like when she opened the portal and they're firing arrows through it, yeah, that was, yeah, cool. was that's that's brilliant for the fact when that they get the earworms and oh, they yeah. drop the the bombs. I mean, yep, this yep. is cl- yeah, like this is how I feel. Mages would actually battle through mm. subterfuge as well as yeah, just yeah. straight power. And the fact that they showed like fiery magic has repercussions, as in, in consuming you whole for that. Like, like it, it felt like a very uh, a very well thought. More so than most of the episodes, well thought out. <laughs> uh, thing. But sure. I do wish they would give me a goddamn map at some point. <laughs> I don't know where anything is. In, I know it's a little nebulous. Most of the stuff's in the north, sure. and uh, Niflgard is in the south. Mm-hmm. But I have no idea where anything relates to anything else. It's not important. It, <laughs> it is important. I'm just, I, I'm it might be a There's family. characters yeah. traveling. No, no, no. I'm busting I don't know if I have to go 100 miles. I don't have to go 10 miles. <laughs> I don't know where anything is in this goddamn world. Sure. Uh, maybe I'm spoiled by Game of Thrones because they did a did really good job map. with that. Sure, I get but you there. If show someone looking at a map <laughs> with like <laughs> well, things they, highlighted, I'll be like, okay, <laughs> it's all I need. Exactly. Well, that's, that's funny because they yeah, had that true. big map room and the map was like the size of like, it was like Did 20 by 20. Yeah, yeah, but it was huge, you but they couldn't it. focus on anything <laughs> yeah. because it was yeah. so big. It's yeah. just like, be careful what you wish for. They yeah. gave you way too much and way too many details to make yeah. anything. I agree with you. And I, I, I like the style of this a lot. One of the things I noticed right away was at the beginning uh, in the Queen's mm-hmm. Palace. I noticed they used a lot of um, 
it was this wasn't consistent, but like they used like did a Robert Edgar's thing where they where you felt like you felt like you were the the thing was being lit by the candles and by the fire and by the torches. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I like the sparsity. Like not everything was ornate. Not. What it, Steve was making some sorry. All right, um, that I like the fact that they that they that um, and some of the set decking that they did use some restraint. That this not everything was like this big ornate thing that they're drink. Oh, everybody's drinking out of chalices. Um, they they did go back and forth on that. Um, and I do like this. I, I do like sometimes you could definitely. It was weird because the the the, the style was not always consistent. Sometimes it was very, you know, it was. On location, very real, and then you had points where it's like, "Oh, <laughs> nice green screen work there." Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm going to say there's more uh, to compliment it on than detract from it, and I Fair. think the timeline goes into it, and the way they handled the timeline. And I, I agree with you. I think the set deck was where it should be. So, yeah. um, so I one. am going to say this. I at several points during all three, I wanted to wait. To go last on this question, because I'm ne- I wasn't sure. I have a question mark next to this, and I have been convinced of both sides by all three of you at certain points of this. And I was kind of leaning more towards a zero, so that's probably where I'm going to go. But let me talk this through real quickly. Um, I think that there are many good points in in this with the style. I think that even though sometimes the monsters look a not, little fake, yeah, whatever, <laughs> not completely not real. The bush. I think that the monster design is really good sure. throughout. Um, I will say that I think that the costume design, as you mentioned, is awesome. They do a good job of having the bard make the soundtrack for this, mm. and I thought that was really cool. On the negative side, uh, you're right. The You have no geographical idea where the fuck you are at any <laughs> fucking point. That's a very good point, my show. friend. It's true. And it really it bugged me, too, and I'm glad that you mentioned it. Um, <clears throat> my biggest nitpick is that there are no visual cues to tell you when you're changing timelines in this show. There, there is no like easy like, we, signifiers. We, we just talked about. Yeah. I think we talked about. I think we mentioned this earlier. We just did a uh, Little Women review, and in Little Women, there are very clear visual cues, sure. even though they're subtle. They're there to tell you when you're changing timelines. And in this show, it just doesn't happen. There's nothing other than the characters like talking to each other in, you know, and and like that character shouldn't be there. Oh, I guess it's a different timeline. I feel like they watched Westworld. I like we can pull that off. Yeah, but like the thing is, Westworld even has like Westworld is brilliant about this. Mm. This show is not. (laughs) Like Westworld is brilliant about it. They do have visual cues. It's just so subtle that you don't pick up on it until later Mm. when you go back and realize, oh yeah, that's right. Every time there's like this slightly different filter on this that then it's in a different timeline. This show I don't think had a different filter for anything. No, you're right. It's it like I get what you mean. It ran the same filter for everything. That like everything looked the same. There was no um like color cues, there were no <clears throat> costume cues. There was nothing that changed between one timeline and the other. That and that and where that is where I really got bogged down and like annoyed with this. I think that it should have been there as like even if you weren't going to realize it immediately, it should have been there as something that you could go back and say, "Oh yeah, that's right. I I forgot to or I didn't notice that." Mm. Well, uh, draw. Okay, and uh, Yennefer, don't age. That's works. Nick. I wish actually uh, uh, Yasker had aged. Yeah, because it mm. feels like time had passed where he should have aged. It's been a like ten bit. years or whatever it was. Right, yeah, true. But like, I don't, but because I don't of know. that, you're saying been, it, because yeah. there's a part where Yennefer skips thirty years. So I don't know mm. when. Like, like this thing is. Like, it, it feels that Yasker should have aged a little bit. I think there's some offhand comments about like, that. Yeah, but. A little bit of visual cues with him would have been an interesting thing to do. So, where do you come um, down on it then? Oh, I think overall, I, I enjoyed the monster design. Uh, I think that the battles were clever enough to give it a one. I agree. And there's one more thing I meant to say was I am really happy they didn't shy. What does that look for? What? <laughs> just, that, that's <laughs> that's just, just say it. Just say <laughs> it. Okay. I thought they were. Um, I th- I'm glad they didn't shy away from things like with the. Um, oh, crap. The. Um, 
the 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 baby that would grown up Strega, to, Strega. the Strega that had the umbilical cord on it mm. um that the, the the violence the brutality sure. um like even the when titties. when you, when yell not just the nudity but so many titties. but in Jew, yeah like, <laughs> but, no but i mean the it would be so yeah. easy to like when Jennifer's burying the baby on the beach that will be pulled out so, you know immediately uncovered <laughs> yeah. because she buried it one foot deep but yeah <laughs> not even but the <laughs> but the whole thing is they could have very easily even though this was a made for netflix movie they could have very easily shied away from some of the more brutality the more brutal things or, um in it which kind of really did give it to me some gravitas even yeah, as weird enough. as it could be in you know, it's it's it gave it some gravitas. I was looking at Sivo because he did not tell me what his scores. Zero and okay. ones. <laughs> okay, zero for style, just over the line it seems. All right, then Chris, bring us home. Do you recommend The Witcher? Oh boy, um, I do. Um, I would recommend it to the people I know that would like to see it. It's not one of these that I'm going to run out and be like, "Oh my God, have you seen Witcher?" So I guess it's going to be maybe a softer recommendation, but I do know enough people. But that overall, I, I do know enough people sure. that I can recommend this to. So I think I have to give it a one. All right. I am, last. I am going to give this a one as well. I, I, like it's a soft one, but but good enough. You're it's saying, it's again? a show that I enjoyed watching. Mm. I'll say that, and I think that it seems that most people that are nerdy like me, <laughs> uh-huh. enjoy it more than I did, so I think that it's an easy recommend for most people that I, you know, that I'm friends with or, like, that I think would like it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, there's no reason not to watch it. It's not like it was bad. It was just not as good. I didn't think it was as good as a lot of other people thought it was, I guess. Cody, I'm going last. I watch three television shows right now. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Hmm? <laughs> The Great British Bake Off <laughs> and The Witcher. And I like the schlockiness of it. <laughs> I, I, really? I grew up, as I, I brought this up a thousand times, I grew up on Hercules' Legendary Journeys. This reminds me so much of it. It's not good. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's great. Good, but not great. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's enjoyable nonsense. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's an escape from the world. Like watching British people cook baked goods. I don't have to <laughs> uh-huh. think about anything. I just have to watch it. Just take and it in and like just, it's a kickback. Yeah. I, I, either watching so, uh, uh, what, what's, uh, what's the actor's name who does The Witcher? Uh, Cam- 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 watching a grunt and kill things <laughs> or watching like fancy pastries. Doesn't matter. It's the same as yes. equivalence. <laughs> All right, very nice. Well, I mean, I yes, I'm going to recommend it overall. Well, like I said, it had its stumblings. It's not like the most amazing thing ever to take off and like enrapture me in season one. It does a good enough job with a property that I'm f- familiar with and like quite a bit. And I think there's some potential here to flesh it out and perhaps make it be great and versus the pretty good solid that it is now. Mm. So yeah. All right, and with that, any final thoughts before I uh, give out the numbers here, boys? Yeah. All right, monster killing numbers are Chris. You have given it the highest score with an eight. Ian, you and I have agreed upon a seven, and Stevo a little bit downer with a six. So that will give us a seven overall, mm-hmm. which is like, yeah, pretty solid. Like, <laughs> yeah, better than average, but not a like approaching greatness, but not quite there yet. A passing grade. Yeah, yeah, a, a solid it's monster a kill. Passing grade. Yeah. So this is a professor. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, oh, so, I hope they bring in the professor. That would be awesome. Yeah. Hopefully. So yeah, but for now, which your first season, season one, solid enough. Check it out if you're into it. And then we'll see how they do season two. And uh, we ourselves are going to go fight some monsters right now. I have been Scott Thurlow here with Christopher Morgan. Destiny, no escaping. That's for me. Mm-hmm. And Jonathan <laughs> Ian Manzer. Give a watch. Hey, <laughs> and Stephen Amosi. And I want to go uh, kill or be killed by my own personal monsters. Right. <laughs> I'm calling my horse Roach. See you next time.